Hello everybody and welcome to yet another video on the keto diet on the internet. My name is Mark and I'm a rising junior at NYU. At the end of the summer of 2019, I had one of those epiphany moments and I felt that I wasn't who I wanted to be and I was far from it. And so I decided to change several things about myself. One of those things was weight, and I already had the keto diet floating around in my head, so I went right into research. The benefits of reducing brain fog and losing weight were already enough in my eyes, but I was also super intrigued by the idea of fighting my biology on what I wanted to eat versus what I should eat and how I should control what I eat. I was around 235 pounds on September 1st, 2019, and in early December I hit just under 200, and I believe the keto diet was one of the two big keystone habits that I formed in that time to get to where I am today. There are so many resources out there on the internet about what the keto diet is and explaining it, so I'm not going over that in this video. I have a link to a video down below that's just under 10 minutes. Visually, it's like a Kurtzigit video, uh, but it's by a Twitch streamer. He's a very funny guy. If you haven't already, definitely look up some videos or articles about what the keto diet is before continuing on with this video. That being said, the purpose of this video is to be a video that I felt that I needed when I started the keto diet last fall. Hopefully it's not just another how to succeed on keto video, but one specifically intended for maybe college or university style living and what things help me in that setting. I wanna emphasize the fact that this video is based on my experience. My only stamp of credibility is the objective facts such as how much weight I lost or how clear my mind felt and how much energy I felt I had whilst on keto. As I mentioned, this video is gonna start off about the university and college lifestyle and how you can fit keto into that pretty easily, but don't be afraid to generalize what I say to your situation. First off, meal plans. If you're able to cancel your meal plan, definitely cancel it. Personally, when I canceled my meal plan for the fall 2019 semester, that paid for not only all the food that I ended up needing to buy over the semester, but it also paid for my boxing membership. Now, canceling the meal plan is sort of based on whether or not you have a kitchen. My first year, I didn't have a kitchen, so canceling my meal plan wasn't an option, not to mention NYU doesn't let us cancel freshman year meal plans anyway. My second year, I had a pretty small kitchen and I ended up cooking a lot. That being said, if you're watching this video and thinking to yourself, I can't cook, Yes, you can. It's so easy. There are so many recipes online that are so easy to follow. And that being said, 80% of my meals ended up just being chicken with salt, pepper, and a little bit of oregano, or maybe even like hamburgers with salt and pepper. If you do have to stick with a meal plan, see if you can limit it a little bit. For example, if your current plan gives you three meals a day, see if you can go to a plan for two meals a day so that you can go out and buy something like a small snack for that third meal instead of paying for it on your meal plan. The hard part about the dining halls isn't avoiding carbs. If you get a burger, take away the bun. If you're going to get a one of those meals they offer, ask for no fries. The hard part is getting the fats that you need for the keto diet. Keeping your protein diet moderate is an issue that I found a lot of people had online, so it's really important to make sure you get a lot of fats and less protein. So, when you're in the dining hall, see if you can get some salad and put a little extra olive oil on there. This again cycles back to doing the research. It's definitely possible to make food in your dorm without cookware while also on a meal plan. For example, one of my favorite snacks and something I have probably every day at this point is an avocado with like two or three tablespoons of olive oil. You don't need a fridge for avocados and olive oil to stay fresh, assuming you're gonna eat the avocados within a few days, so it's a great midday snack and super high in fats for you. Personally, I'm not a coffee drinker, but I did start to have a bit of an energy drink problem, as my roommates can probably attest to. There's also some research showing that caffeine does help uh, releasing fat cells and other words, helps burning fat or accelerate the burning of fat. I've linked a research study down below about that. But also, keep in mind, caffeine affects a hormone called ADH, which means you pee more when you drink caffeine. Make sure you keep drinking water. When you go to the store, know what you're gonna buy. Like I mentioned earlier, the main foods that I'm gonna go for are chicken, eggs, and burger meat, because you can buy them in pretty big quantities and they're not that expensive for the amount of food that you get out of them. You get some chicken breasts or some chicken thighs, cut them up into tenders or chunks, cook them all up and you've got like two or three meals that you can put in Tupperwares for later. Now, the same meal can get pretty redundant, which is why we spice things up with some awesome recipes that you can find online. When you're looking at recipes, I'd recommend finding things that don't require you to buy too much nuanced items. For example, I made a curry chicken dish that required me to buy seven different spices that I use for nothing else. That being said, when you make these recipes, whether it be curry chicken or keto lasagna, they often make like four to six meals, which is fantastic. And so you have some really good meals for your entire week. Know what you like and know what you can make consistently. Just don't over prep. Uh, and I'll talk about that more later. With college life comes social life for some of us. I know at the start, my roommates were kind of like, you're doing keto? Like, 
why. But at the end, they were actually kind of curious about it and uh, became pretty supportive. All in all, no matter what you're doing when you're hanging out with friends, be proud of the diet that you're on. Just keep doing you. Bring along a snack in case there's something you can't eat. I know one night we had a floor orientation at my dorm. They had free pizza and I was sitting there watching people gorge on this pretty cheap but New York pizza and I was missing it a little bit, but I had my larger purpose in mind. All in all, things are always available. If you're going to a restaurant with friends, look up the meal online. They're all online these days. Worst case, opt for something that's just no carb. Don't worry about the fats for this one time. Get a salad with chicken and no croutons. You know, get a burger, take away the bun, get some chicken and fries and then give your fries to a friend. Always hydrate. All right, jumping into the more general with planning and prepping your meals, always prep for meals ahead of time. You never know when you're gonna get bogged down by schoolwork or just general life things. So having a meal planned and made ahead of time can be a lifesaver. Also cooking every day can become a real time sink. There is a delicate balance though. One of the big things I read online with meal prepping is that people over prep and make too much food. You don't wanna do that because then you'll end up throwing away food. Don't forget though, it's not all about the macros. So make sure you, you get some spinach or something that has a lot of great nutrients. Splash in some olive oil with that handful of baby spinach and you've got nutrients and a great source of fats for a meal side or something. Pretty much every day my breakfast was four eggs and about three strips of bacon. I probably went bacon half the days of the week just because I'm not a big bacon person, but I also wouldn't recommend four eggs exactly. Eggs are just super cheap. It was about $2 a dozen in New York City. For lunch, this is hit or miss based on what you're doing throughout your day. One of my favorite lunches to make would be to take chicken I had made previously or maybe even hamburger meat and make a homemade chipotle bowl. You just take some cooked chicken from before, throw it in a bowl, salt, pepper, guacamole, some salsa, shredded cheese, and you've pretty much got yourself a homemade chipotle bowl. But yeah, when it comes to lunch, you can kind of do whatever works. Personally, I always tried to go with something that was portable since there was a good chance I would not be at my dorm. When it comes to dinner, uh, cooking each night can actually become pretty relieving, but there are some nights where I'm busy, so I'd pull out one of those prepped meals. One of the things I would really recommend cooking is learning how to cook salmon. Salmon is super easy to cook and can be done super quickly. Lastly, snacking. Have snacks on you almost at all times, but do be careful. The indoor avocado is fantastic, but you might want something a little more portable at times. And for that, I'd recommend nuts. Nuts have great fats, but they are pretty high in carb count relatively, so do be careful. When it comes to prepping, also prep for temptation. For example, if you're going to an orientation night at your dorm and you know there's gonna be free pizza, plan ahead, make a little note to yourself, whatever it takes. All in all, when you're planning for temptation, know yourself. It goes with really any habit, but know what your own weak points are. I know for me, if I'm going down the cereal aisle, I need to close my eyes because if I see mini weights, it's all gone. I know sleep is a big thing, especially in college, but it's so important. I'm not gonna say much on the topic because I could make an entire video about why college students can get more sleep when they're not. So I'm just gonna leave this here, but if you don't already prioritize sleep, I would really recommend doing it while on keto. Also, it's really important to have that base schedule to really make sure your biological cycle is working in your favor in at least one really important area of your life. There's a chance you'll uh, lose more water while you're on keto, so to speak. So really make sure to bring a water bottle around with you. Against a lot of advice that I read, I went straight into a high intensity workout regime. It was pretty rough in the beginning, but I was also very, very out of shape. I went all in and signed up for boxing that was only about a 10 minute walk from me, which was 7 a.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays and noon on Saturdays. And I did karate on Monday and Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. When you're finding a way to work out, find something that fits in your schedule. For me, this was always before I ate a meal and far away from any of my classes. So I had time to adapt going back and forth. Also exercising on a fast, in other words, not eating before you work out can be pretty helpful and feel pretty good. To be frank, I'm surprised that I stuck with the diet as well as I did. I didn't even take an official before picture because I had very little faith in myself. Don't be like me, you got this. Plan ahead for the excuses that you're gonna make when you schedule in a workout and your body tells you that it doesn't wanna do it. If high intensity workouts are your thing, I would say go for it. I'd personally recommend maybe going on runs and definitely doing bodyweight workouts in your room. I restarted keto this month and during quarantine, the past two or so months, I've been working out with bodyweight workouts in my room and going on small runs and it's been super beneficial and it feels great. When it comes to dieting, the main idea is that you eat less calories than you burn. So you might be burning, let's say 2,500 calories a day by doing your average daily activities and only taking in about 2000 calories. Working out amps this number way up. 
I believe, and this is not like a statement of fact, that when you really, really push yourself, like on those mornings when I hadn't eaten since the dinner before during boxing, I really, really pushed myself and forced my body to dig into its reserves. Your body searches for energy from somewhere, and that ends up being fat. The keto diet is getting your body used to burning fat for fuel and producing ketones. And so I believe that this process of pushing myself and finding that energy from fat during these workouts was made much, much easier by the keto diet. I even enjoyed the mindset of sitting there, my shoulders dying and thinking, come on body, burn some fat, give me some energy. Oftentimes it gave me a second wind and whether or not that's a fact or just what I believe and it's total placebo, I do think there's an essence of truth to what I've said. What a lot of people do know is that when you work out, you get hot. This is because heat is actually waste from muscles being used. So if you're on keto, you might already be you know, losing water fast. If you're drinking caffeine, you're losing water fast. And if you're sweating, you're losing water fast three times over. You know what that means? That means you should always have water on you and always hydrate whenever you can. Something that came up a lot for me when I was looking at the keto diet was this keto fatigue. I don't remember it hitting me too hard when I started keto in the fall, but it definitely did hit me hard, especially in terms of energy deprivation and how many naps I wanted to take throughout the day the first two weeks of this month when I restarted keto. Just when you're doing your research and do your research, be aware of the side effects that this keto fatigue can bring. The keto fatigue hits people in different ways. However, in whichever way it hits you, I encourage you not to look on it as a bad thing. Don't look on the keto fatigue and say, oh, man, my breath smells horrible. Think on it and say, hey, my breath smells bad. I must be getting into ketosis. Look on the bright side. Look at the keto symptoms being a sign that you're getting into ketosis. Lastly, make sure to keep an eye on yourself. Know your limits. Trust your gut. If something doesn't feel right, stop doing keto. Step back. Do some research. Talk to a doctor. So on and so forth. For me, I created a Trello board where I stored some cool infographics about keto and links to articles that talked a lot about keto. Also having a little inspiration list on why I was doing keto was super helpful for me. I'd recommend taking 30 seconds at the end of every day just to say, I was tempted by blank, but I resisted blank. I'm gonna keep going. Then over time, you look back on the streak and see how many small victories you've made to add up to such a big win. Again, this entire video is experience-based. I'm making a video that I think I wanted or needed when I started the keto diet back in the fall of 2019. Everyone is different, such as your macro intake, which is carbs, fats, and proteins, based on your height and weight. There are other factors, so again, please do your research. When it comes to the macros, there's an app I'd recommend, and it's called Carb Manager. Personally, I still despise logging my food, but for me, it is an absolute necessity. It's tedious, but I need it. I know a lot of people use MyFitnessPal, but I recommend Carb Manager because it's specifically tailored for keto in a way. You put in your height and your weight and it calculates your macros for you based on the percentages you want. And also when you look at the main home screen, it gives you nice, bright, colorful things on how many carbs you've hit, fats you've hit, proteins you've hit. And also when you're adding a food, it'll tell you how keto friendly it is. Plus looking back on tracking your food is like having a streak that you don't wanna break. It goes hand in hand with this inspiration list. You have this streak you build and this thing you can look at to remind you why you're not gorging on the double fudge brownies available that your roommate made. All in all, never forget your purpose and keeping a food log is a great way to remind yourself of how far you've come and how far you are definitely going to go. There are so many communities out there for keto and I just wanna remind you that you're not alone when you're going on this diet. It might be a big fad, but when you struggle with it and when you pursue and persevere through this diet, there's people out there that are doing the same. If you don't have a Reddit account, I'd recommend signing up and visiting the keto subreddit at r slash keto. Seeing people's success stories along with tips and tricks and just the small wins people get has really given me the ability to push forward when it gets really tough. Also, when I was able to share my success story, it gave me a great feeling when I thought, you know what, maybe my story can help someone else feel inspired just as I've felt inspired by the tens if not hundreds of stories that I have seen over the past three or so months. Even posting a random good day on Twitter got a random response from a guy and it really made my day. One of the most important things is that when you're on this diet, be proud of it. Know your purpose, your passion, your reason for doing it. I'm someone who used to eat a lot of food and so it was always embarrassing when people would say, hey Mark, want a second serving? And I'd be like, nah, I'm full. Or be like, oh, you want more? And I'd be like, no, I'm good. And they're like, Really? Like, Mark? What happened? Sometime last month, I was with my dad and I made myself a stack of pancakes and he said, ah, that's the Mark I know. I didn't take the comment personally. It wasn't offensive. It was funny. And it made me reflect on this, this habit that I used to have way too often 
and I'm really glad that I've stopped that habit. These comments come up all the time. My friends still make fun of me for when I went out to lunch with them once and I got ribs and didn't put any sauces on them because they were all really high carb. Comments aren't personal. Try to laugh along with your friends, make jokes about yourself, be proud of the diet. You know why you're doing it. You know what your reason is. That pancake breakfast thing I did, even if I wasn't planning on restarting keto, is totally fine. It's just everything in moderation. And moderation was something that I wasn't really good at before I started keto and controlled what I ate. Personally, I think keto can be sustained for a long period of time, but I don't think it's sustainable for a lifetime. Set a goal, hit it, take a break and reflect a little bit, and then do it again if you want. Stick by yourself and reference your communities when you need to, they've got your back. That being said, I hope you enjoyed my nuggets of wisdom throughout this video. It started off college and university based, but as I was writing the script, I realized that there were these few things that really helped me that I would have loved to know when I started and want to share with someone else out there. Now that we've hit the end, thank you so much for watching. I'm a really tiny channel, so I always read comments and respond to them. It's one of my favorite things about YouTube. I'm uploading a video every Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern time this summer, so definitely subscribe to check back for more. If you're interested in language videos or NYU student life, uh, definitely check out the rest of my videos because I've got a ton of that. With each video, I hope to change at least one person's perspective on life, on the world, for the better. And when I do that, I feel like that is my measurement of success. So thank you for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome.